One of the things that amazes me about the universe is that it has to be exactly the size and the mass that it is to get a single planet on which the equivalent of human beings can exist. Make the universe slightly more massive or slightly less massive, there's no possibility for life of any kind. It has to be exactly that size. It also has to be precisely the age that it is in order for us human beings to exist here. You know, as old as the universe is, there's an extremely narrow window of time in which we humans can exist in a civilized state. And the other thing we've learned about the universe is it isn't just length, width, height, and time. We now realize there must be six other dimensions of space to accompany the three big ones, six extremely tiny dimensions of space. It's the only way you can have uh, quantum mechanics, gravity, and relativity coexisting. But it tells us that the God that created these space-time dimensions must be bigger than what can happen in 10 space-time dimensions. And you know, God tells us in the Bible that uh, he has given us free will. On the other hand, he has predetermined every thought we'll think, every word we'll speak, and every action we'll perform. That's a contradiction if all you got is length, width, height, and time. But if you have a God that can create space-time dimensions at will, which the space-time theorems now prove, there must be a causal agent that has the power to create space-time dimensions. In that kind of a context, you can resolve the paradox of human free will and divine predetermination.